Hey guys, uh, welcome to my new Blu-ray collection update video. I have made one in a couple of uh, months, so here's the titles that I've picked up. There isn't a lot here, but uh, what I've got I'm quite happy with. So um, I've only got BFI, Master of Cinema, and Arrow uh, releases, so I'll go through BFI, then Arrow, then Master of Cinema. First off is a film by Jean-Luc Godard. This is Vivre Sa Vie. A uh, very famous film, one of his more well-known films. Uh, I think it's got a release on Criterion as well. Uh, I've watched this and I thought it was very good. It reminded me a lot of uh, Belle de Jour and um, it was kind of like a cross between his, Godard's kind of stylistic nature and the way that he's kind of using interesting techniques uh, with Belle de Jour's kind of story. Obviously Anna Karina's great in it. Uh, I'm not sure how I feel about him using The uh, Passion of Joan of Arc from uh, Drea, like they use Drea's film The Passion of Joan of Arc in this, and I'm not sure how I feel about that. Um, this comes with a lot of special features, BFI, and the transfer is pretty good as well, so I, I'm, in, I'm glad that I've got that. I actually think it's the most accessible Goddard film that I've seen, um, followed by Les Mepuis, but uh, I don't think Breathless is very... Um, I think I find Breathless a very hard watch, but this I found playful. This I found more like a, uh, a Truffaut film than a Godard film in the kind of sense that I could just sit down and watch it whenever and uh, just enjoy it for what it is. Next up is another Godard. Um, I now have pretty much all of Godard's work on Blu-ray that you can get. The only thing that I don't have is Alphaville, which Studio Canal released in a box set, which I'm not going to buy because I own all the other titles in the set. Uh, this is Band Apart. Um, I haven't seen this, but it's uh, BFI again. Really nice special features, a lot of interviews with Anna Karina, and um, yeah, I'm looking forward to watching it. I know the dancing scene is what uh, Tarantino kind of was influenced to put into Pulp Fiction, so I'm looking forward to just checking that out. Next up, it's the uh, first and final Arrow video release here. It's just Retaliation by uh, Yasuharu, Yasuharu Habas, Yasuharu Hasebi. I think I just massacred his name. I watched uh, his other film, Massacre Gun, and um, I'm just really interested to seeing this. I'm a fan of Joshua Shado, and he's in this film as well. A lot of special features, as you'd expect from Arrow. I'm expecting some kind of noir-y, kind of pulpy crime flick um, with gangsters, and I, I, I think that's what I'm going to get. I'm really looking forward to checking this out. Next up are the Arrow... Academy titles I've picked up. The first one is The Sweet Smell of Success. I haven't seen it. It's got uh, Burt Lancaster and Tony Curtis in it. I've heard the film's very good. Uh, the reason I picked this up is because it was in a shop for Fiverr and I thought why not? It's one of the Academy releases. It was pre-owned but the discs are in perfect condition. The booklet isn't damaged whatsoever. So I thought why not? Well, you know, um, I need to watch this. But uh, if it's anything like the uh, studio film um, like Sullivan's Travels, I recently watched that and I was absolutely blown away by it. So I'm hoping that their studio related films like that uh, Sweet Mother Sweet Smother Success and um, the kind of other Hollywood style films are equally good because I really enjoyed Sullivan's Travels. Next up a film that I wasn't really sure about getting uh, I kind of succumbed to it anyway it's Robert Altman's Three Women. I've only ever seen one other Altman and I didn't like it very much and that was The Long Goodbye uh, which was also released in um, Arrow Academy, so I've got both Altman films that they've released. Obviously the packaging looks absolutely stunning, comes with a nice booklet. I'm expecting it to be a good film, uh, but I don't know. Next up is a film that's been in the Academy for a long, long time. It's The Tin Drum. I've heard very good things about it. I have not seen it. I know it's about the World War II and the time after or during World War II with the little kid representing the uh, kind of infantile nature of Germany. But uh, yeah, I've not seen it yet. I've heard it's very good. I'm looking forward to checking it out. Next up is a box set that Arrow put out recently. It is the Taviani Brothers box set. Now this is absolutely gorgeous as you can see. Uh, I do have an issue with the front packaging. I'm not sure that you're going to be able to see it on camera, but where my finger is, there is a blue blotch. Um, I actually returned this to Amazon three times because they kept giving me additions with blue blotches on. The first one had a massive blue blotch which was bigger than this one. The second one, the booklet was really badly damaged inside of it. And the third one, the blotch is a lot less noticeable and everything else inside of it is excellent. So this comes with three films, Padre Padrone, 
The Night of the Shooting Stars and Chaos. I've not seen any of them. Uh, the special features are pretty decent, as you'd expect with Arrow. Um, they're a lot better than the upcoming release of The Human Condition. That's got very, very minimal releases. So I, I, I won't show you the inside artwork because I might do a uh, unboxing video of just this itself, but I'm really happy with it. The book looks great. I've, give a, I've read it a little bit, but I didn't want to spoil the films. I'm looking forward to exploring the work of the Taviani brothers, but I'm, I've kind of uh, read a lot about them and I, I know that they're very, very good, so I'm looking forward to them. Next up are the Masters of Cinema releases I've got. There's been a recent sale on on Amazon, um, so I picked up The Day of the Outlaw, or just Day of the Outlaw by Andre de Toth. Uh, I haven't seen any of his other films, but I've I've seen half of this so far. I got interrupted and uh, had to stop watching it, but yeah, it's uh, pretty interesting. It looks to me uh, very much like Tarantino's influence for The Hateful Eight. A bunch of people in a cabin together locked up because it's snowing. And uh, yeah, uh, so far it looks really good. The uh, cinematography is really nice. It's kind of like a studio western from MGN. But uh, yeah, I enjoyed what I've seen of it. I want to go back and finish it. Next up is a film that kind of caught my eye. Uh, the Naked Prey. I'm really hoping this is one of those hidden classics that I've never really heard of or know anything about. Like uh, Wake and Fright. That was like the one film when I started to watch the Masters of Cinema releases. I kind of picked that up randomly, not knowing what it was about and it absolutely blew me away so I'm expecting this to be one of the really good releases that they've done. Uh, special features are a bit lacking on this release uh, as they were on Day of the Outlaw. It's been a bit weird recently that um, the Massive Cinema releases haven't been putting a lot of special features on with their products they've just been transferring really well-known films. Uh, one of the films that has a lot of special features on was Man with a Movie Camera though so you know that it kind of goes both ways you either get one with loads or you get a, a lot with very minimal special features um, but there is like a contrast between the two uh, there's no middle ground really and it's a bit annoying next up is uh, a little mini kind of not box set it's weird it's it's a single disc edition of uh, Peter Watkins's film Edvard Munch and um, I picked this up because I, I saw the trailer that was on the YouTube channel and I hadn't realized that it was a um, biopic so when I was watching the trailer, I thought it was really cool because I don't know anything about the artist. I didn't know when he was born. I didn't know what time he was alive. So that's why I didn't realize that it was a biopic. I thought it was like an actual documentary. And uh, I kind of saw the length of it and I was like, yeah, I want to kind of watch this. This could be really interesting. So I picked it up. Really nice uh, box art by Massive Cinema. It's got that kind of small case, which is a bit annoying. It won't it won't sit next to The Passion of Joan of Arc well uh, because that has a thick top of the case. Um, Man with a Movie Camera also has a thin case here. Um, but yeah, the special features on this is that there are none. There, there's literally no special features at all, but they've put it in a nice packaged box and stuff like that. Uh, it comes with a booklet with uh, writings on Monk's work as well as the film itself. But when I saw the film, I didn't, didn't really enjoy it much. There's obviously a lot of um, artistic merit within the film. Uh, I can see why people think it's excellent, but for me, it wasn't what I thought it was going to be, which made my expectation and uh, appreciation of the film a lot less than I ought to have been. Um, I will watch this again sometime in the future. As I said, it's a nice addition from Master of Cinema, but uh, it's not the best of films. Next up, the uh, big, big release from Master of Cinema recently is the Buster Keaton's short films, complete short films collection from uh, 1917 to 1923, so that's six years of Keaton shorts. Um, I've worked my way through a couple of them, but I've kind of started watching them independently rather than one after the other. When I'm in the mood to watch a Keaton film, I'll just sit down and watch one of them. A lot of them are really, really charming and just engaging and enjoyable. Um, the first lot are not directed by Keaton, but he's in them. Um, the second, like towards halfway through the set, you start getting the films which are directed by Keaton, which are, I think, personally I find more playful and there's more of a sense of um, like the pacing's a lot better and the kind of the stories move on and develop into things rather than just being a stable for comic relief and slapstick effect as well but yeah this is an absolutely stunning edition hopefully you can see all the titles on here I will put them on screen as well um, there's a lot of special features here as well. Well, there's a, it looks like a lot of special features. There's a couple of uh, a couple of the films have different endings. There is a couple of commentaries on some of them, and there is I've seen 
the making of where they explain how they um, kind of restored some of them as well but yeah this set is absolutely brilliant if you're a fan of cinema or a fan of Buster Keaton if you're a fan of Buster Keaton you need to pick this up because it's absolutely gorgeous the films look really good from what I've seen uh, I mean I've seen about 12 of them um, there are about 30 32 in the set I think there's just absolutely loads of them but yeah that's uh the big release from massive cinema that i picked up i won't show in the inside because i might do an unboxing of the uh of this edition so everyone can see what's inside but yeah um i am glad that i picked this up so yeah that's been my blu-ray update video for august i know in the upcoming months i'm going to be getting a few box sets from massive cinema and arrow um I know one of them is definitely going to be Decalogue, the box set um, the, from the Polish director. I've forgotten his name, but uh, that looks absolutely stunning, and I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, there's also the Woody Allen one that I've got my eye on, and maybe the Human Condition. Um, I'm not sure whether I'm going to go through with that, because it's a lot of money for one long film with not many special features other than a nice booklet and a box. Um, obviously Arrow's transfer will be incredible, but it's quite a lot of money for what you're going to get. Uh, the other Master of the Cinema box set which is coming out is the Murnau set that I'm thinking about still just keeping my pre-order on because this release from Keaton was amazing and Master of Cinema do a great job with everything, as do Arrow. But yeah, thanks for watching guys. If you've got any recommendations of uh, films that I should watch or check out, if you've got any... Uh, any of the films in this video you would like me to do a review of, please write in the comments or contact me um, on YouTube and I will try and get that done. Um, it's also useful for me because I kind of work my way through other films that I've bought. Obviously I buy films to watch rather than buy films I know and I've already seen. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching guys and I'll see you next time.